Welcome to this video on digital electronics. In this video on asynchronous sequential circuits, we will be discussing about the design of pulse mode circuits. In the previous video on asynchronous sequential circuits, we had seen the difference between pulse mode circuits and fundamental mode circuits. So for the design of a pulse mode circuit, the basic requirements are the inputs should be pulses and flip-flops which are unclock flip-flops or latches are used. The pulse should not appear simultaneously in more than one line and the width of the pulse should be long enough so that the circuit can respond to the changes but it should not still be present after the circuit has reached a stable state. So the steps for design for a pulse mode asynchronous circuit is similar to a synchronous sequential circuit. So first for the given problem statement the state diagram is drawn and from the state diagram state table is obtained and redundant steps are eliminated by using state reduction techniques and a simplified state table and a simplified state diagram is obtained. Then based on the number of states, the number of flip-flops that are required is decided upon and binary values are assigned to each of the states. And then the type of flip-flop that needs to be used is decided upon and from the state table, the excitation and output tables are derived. And K-map is used to simplify and obtain the logical expressions for both the circuit output function and the flip-flop input function. And from these logical expressions, the logic diagram is obtained. Let us look at a pulse mode circuit design with an example. So the problem statement is, design a pulse mode circuit having two input lines, X1 and X2, and one output line, Z. The circuit should produce an output pulse to coincide with the last input pulse in the sequence x1, x2, x2. No other input sequence should produce an output pulse. So this design problem has two inputs x1, x2 and one output z. So pul input pulses are given to both x1 and x2. If the input sequence x1, x2 followed by another x2 occurs, then the output z should go high. So we'll obtain the state diagram for the same problem. So take the state S0 first. So in state S0, if the input is X2, then the output is 0 and it remains in the same state. Now if an input of X1 is given, the circuit goes to state 1 with an output of 0. And in state S1, if an input of X1 occurs, it remains in the same state with output 0. But if X2 occurs, then it goes to state S2 with an output of 0. So now if the input sequence is X1, X2, the circuit has moved from state S1 to S2. Now in state S2, if an input of X1 occurs, the circuit goes to state S1 with an output of 0. Now if an input of X2 occurs, then the output goes to 1 and the state goes to S0. So only if this input sequence is X1, X2 followed by another X2, the output of the circuit is 1. Now let us get the state table from the state diagram. So the present state, next state and the outputs. So next state for an input of X1 and X2 is considered. Present state, there are three states S0, S1, S2. Now when the circuit is in state S0, if an input of X1 occurs, it goes to state S1. If an input of X2 occurs, it remains in the same state. So S0 with an input of X1, it goes to state S1. Input of X2 occurs, it remains in the same state S0 with an output of 0 for both. And from S1, similarly, if X2 occurs, it goes to state S2. S1, if X2 is input, it goes to state S2 with an output of 0. Similarly, fill this state table from the state diagram. And we observe there are no two similar states, so there is no reduction of state table. Now from the state table, what we had seen in the previous uh, slide, it is taken here for reference, get the transition table, assign binary values to the states. So since we have three states, at least two bits are required or two flip-flops are required. So assign binary values to the various states. These are the values that are assigned to each of the states. Now from the transition table, let us get the excitation table. So first let us rewrite the transition table with the inputs written in one column vertically down. So x1 and x2 and all the three combinations are considered for the present state and next state written from this table. And then 
the excitation table is obtained. First, the excitation table of T flip flop. Since we are going to use T flip flop for this design, and from that, the inputs of the flip flops is obtained. So, if the present state is zero and next state is zero, then the flip flop A input should be zero. And if the present state is zero, next state is one. From this excitation table, we can see the input to the flip flop is one. Similarly, fill the value for the other states also. So, from this, the excitation table is derived. From the excitation table, for the inputs TA and TB inputs to the flip flops, and for the output, we get the logical expressions using K map where the inputs and the present state are the variables to the K map. So, for the present state QA and QB, considering the two inputs X1 and X2, the uh, values are obtained from the excitation table in the previous slide and notice over here only vertical grouping is allowed because x1 is a different input and x2 is a different input and pulses are given to x1 and x2. So, only vertical grouping is allowed. So, from this we get the expression for TA, TB and Z. And from these logical expressions, the logical diagram is drawn. So, for a pulse mode asynchronous sequential circuit, unclock flip flops or latches are used. So, if using the flip flops and the combination circuit with the inputs x1 and x2, the output is obtained. Now, let us look into a next design problem. So, design a pulse mode circuit with inputs x1, x2 and x3 and output z. The output should change from 0 to 1 only for input sequence x1, x2 and x3 when z is 0. Also, the output z should remain 1 till x2 occurs. So, use SR flip flops for the design. So, in this problem, it is stated that there are three inputs and one output and the condition for the output going high is given when the sequence x1, x2, x3 occurs when z is 0, z changes to 1 and it should remain 1 till x2 occurs and we are asked to use SR flip flops. So, first let us draw the state diagram. Consider the first state A. So, in state A, if the inputs are not x1 that is x2 or x3 it remains in the same state with an output of 0. If input is x1 it goes to state B with an output 0. In state B again if the input is x1 it remains in the same state and it goes to the next state C only if the input is x2. If the input is x3 it get, goes back to the original state A. From C if the input is x3 it goes to the next state D because we need the sequence x1, x2, x3. So, if it is x3, it goes to the next state D with an output of 1. Whereas, if the input is x1, it goes back to state B and if it is x2, it goes back to state A. And from the D state, it is mentioned that the output should remain 1 till x2 occurs. So, only if x2 occurs, the output goes to 0 and it goes to state A. Otherwise, for x1 and x3 input, it remains in the same state with an output of 1. So, for this given state diagram, the state table and the transition table is obtained. State table from the state diagram, like the previous cases, consider the four states over here and for the inputs of x1, x2, x3, what is the next state and what is the output? It is filled from the state diagram and there is no reduction of state table over here. There are no equivalent states, so there is no reduction. And so, assign binary values to the states. There are four states. So, two bits are used or two flip flops are used and binary values are assigned to the states and we get the transition table. So, from the transition table, we need to get the excitation table. So, the transition table, the inputs are all written in one column vertically down and get the present the next state from the previous table rewrite it. And then, for an SR flip flop, note down the excitation table and from that get the flip flop inputs for the present value of a output of a flip flop to what the next value is required. Obtain the value of S and R accordingly for the two flip flops and the output is also written. So, from the excitation table using K map, the logical expressions are obtained for the inputs to the different flip flops. The A flip flop the SNR value and similarly for the B flip flop the SNR value. So, the inputs or the variables for the K map are the present state of the flip flop and the inputs the three inputs that we have. Note here also since we are considering pulse mode circuit 
the vertical columns alone can be grouped horizontal grouping is not permitted because these two inputs are different pulses that are given and the logical expressions are obtained the two flip flops snr inputs and for the output z so the logical diagram is drawn from the logical expressions so in this video we have seen how to design pulse mode circuits for the given problem specification these are the references thank you